Delighted to welcome you to Eye on Health, our podcast in association with Arab Health. I'm Helen Farmer, guiding you through a whole range of topics, speaking to industry insiders and the best in the business about improving your mental and physical health with everything from traditional methods to what might sound like the future, which brings us to today. We're talking about the role of tech and, of course, AI in healthcare right now. And speaking to us is the director of ESG, as Environmental, Social and Governance at M42. Amy Lasky is with us today. It's all about collaborating, about bringing together the local, the regional, the national and, of course, the global. And they are at COP28. And I really appreciate your time in terms of just how hectic it is as someone who is obviously very passionate about healthcare but about that sustainability piece as well, Amy. I wanted to ask about that first, if you don't mind, that passion for the planet. Where did that start for you? Oh, thank you for having me here today, Helen. Most welcome. I've been in this industry for almost 20 years, and I grew a passion for the environment from a very young age. Um, So as you may hear from my accent, I'm from Australia. My hometown is Canberra, uh, and that's up in the Brindabillas. The (laughs) Brindabillas. The Brinda Villas, so beautiful eucalyptus rainforest, not rainforest, sorry, beautiful eucalyptus forests. And through there, I was able to study uh, at the Australian National University Environmental Science. Wow. And from there, I didn't turn back. It's funny because you're saying there 20 years ago, I feel like that word sustainability, it feels more of a, a recent piece and has kind of lost a bit of meaning, I think, to an awful lot of people. Or it means different things to different people, truth be told. And what I'm really interested in is applying it to everyday life, to those very actionable changes and think about the impact we can have as individuals. We've been talking a lot recently about nature deficiency in our children and just how important nature is and connection to nature is for our children's emotional regulation, for their ability to sleep, for all sorts of different things. Is that something as a mum that you are trying to integrate with your children and their mental health? Absolutely. Nature is the natural recharger for your systems. Um, and actively connecting to nature is something I bring to parenting and to life. Mm -hmm. So, and again, through the work we do within M42, we're demystifying that link between planetary health and human health. We live in these built up environments in these big towers and that disconnection from nature really makes it misunderstand how the health of the planet directly impacts on the health of communities. I also think if you're feeling well in yourself, you're feeling empowered and confident to make changes, then the knock-on effect to the environment is huge. You know, if you are feeling upbeat and buoyant and open to learning, then that impacts your immediate life and your family and your work, but also the community that you live in, of course, the planet as well. So you're, you're kind of bringing it all together. It's kind of connecting the dots and in some ways zooming in, in some ways zooming out. Um, so you are at COP28 and we're you know, talking health today as well. So colliding tech, a genomics, preventative care. So let's talk that One Health approach. Can you talk to us about what One Health is, Amy? Yeah, so COP28, for the first time in history, health is on the agenda. So it's recognising on a global sta- stage the importance of health and its connection to nature. So within M42, uh, we first of all need to look at some fairly alarming statistics. Sorry to paint paint the picture. But listen, you can't improve it until you measure it. So give us the numbers. Give us the numbers. So shine a light on some some stats. 13 million people die of health-related... Sorry. 13 million people die of health-related diseases because of climate change. Such as what? I know. Um, anything from increased prevalence of malaria, um, respiratory problems. I immediately went to air pollution Air there. pollution, cardiovascular problems. And again, it's gaining access to health services. Mm-hmm. Um, secondly, looking at the mental health picture, over 68% of adults report climate anxiety and depression. Isn't that interesting? Because I feel like, and I'm not saying it's a choice because some people don't have a choice, but sometimes it is, it's it's quite easy to be fearful rather than feeling powerful about climate change. And we've got a huge ability to control the information that we take in, to be consuming expert takes, to be doing wider reading and listening. But climate anxiety, sad to say, this is probably going to be increasing in the future. I know we can't say that you know this is going to be on the up, but... I would imagine as 
our planet hurtles toward what feels like inevitable right now, our mental health is going to be declining at a similar rate. Yeah, but by recognising that, you can proactively put in place, I'm an optimist by heart, but positively look at things like technology and how that technology can actually minimise and turn the projection of, of climate change. So again, when we look at, let's look at the climate health nexus. So on one side, we know that the impacts on humans as a result of climate change is increasing. On the, on the other side, on the healthcare side, the healthcare industry historically has a very large carbon footprint. Mm. Can you explain why? What are some of the, I don't want to say the main offenders, but perhaps some of the, the big causes that we yeah. can point to for that? So again, looking at statistics, if we were a country, would be the fifth largest emitter in the world, the healthcare sector. Gosh. And if you look at, at buildings, so hospital buildings consume two to three times more energy than conventional buildings. And, the, you know, for... Well, we immediately think of, you know, incubators and the, the amount of machinery that's involved in there. What might be some of the hidden reasons that we might not realise that could be consuming some of that energy? No, indeed. So you're, you're touching on the, on the right points there. So the mechanical systems that are used to cool or heat the places in certain parts of the world mm -hmm. through to the equipment that is embedded in the, in the, in the system itself. MRIs and... Exactly. x-rays gosh okay but as you say by identifying it then you can start to see it as an opportunity about how can we make things better more efficient exactly so if we look at technology and the role that that can play are there any any kind of easy wins anything that people are doing really well regionally or internationally yeah absolutely so first of all um inherently we also need to look at a stat that looks at the demand and supply for healthcare practitioners so globally, we already have a critical shortage of healthcare practitioners, and that's only going to increase in the future, affecting those most at risk and vulnerable. So how can we prevent people entering the system and becoming patients in the first place? Mm -hmm. Fewer patients means fewer emissions. So this is where technology comes into play. So at M42, we use genomic, a human genomic program and AI predictive modelling I know your eyes are opening. <laughs> Tell me more. What does I this mean? mean? So mm -hmm. gathering, so gathering genomic information, so gene, you're able to put into place more precise care and preventative measures to avoid people even entering the system to begin with. In, in terms of what that looks like in practice, like you know, if we have a kind of I don't know, an example patient out there, could you kind of talk us through the process? Of, yeah. You know what they might be struggling with, or what, what we can kind of preempt might be happening, and some of the markers that technology can can take. Yeah. So there's sort of three key um, three three key aids that come out of the genomics program. One is looking at identifying potential mutations, inherited mutations. Secondly, is looking at potentially rare diseases. And thirdly, and importantly, identifying through the identification of these diseases, proactively putting in place healthcare plans so that this disease doesn't manifest in the first place. I'm, I'm, I was thinking there about that, or I'm not going to say the name of the website, an awful website where you kind of check your symptoms and it goes, da -da 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 -da. it could be, you know, you have a brain tumour. This is as far away from Dr. Google as we, as we can get, really, because it's going to be hyper, hyper personalised. Exactly. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. So, for example, through uh, the genomics program, if we identify you're susceptible to diabetes, for example, or heart disease, we can proactively put in place lifestyle changes so that you're not eating as much sugar, um, you're doing more exercise, you're eating those green leafy vegetables uh, so that you're not going to become um, into the system in the first place. Um, I wanted to ask you about the employment shortage then in that case and perhaps the role that AI could play in that role. Are we getting to a stage where we could be looking at digital employees? <laughs> Robots. <laughs> so well, what's important? Yeah, another, kind of. another, um, <laughs> So again, looking at technology, uh, within M42, we've proudly launched a um, chat GBT for medical practitioners and patients. It's called M42. So again, this is uh, an, our, our efforts to democratise healthcare and avoiding people actually having to go to the healthcare facility in the first place. Mm -hmm. Through their use of their mobile phone, they can download the application and ask the question. So it empowers them to have more 
at faster results, more accurate results, and not needing to drive their car to get to the facility to well, begin that's with. That's what I was going to say. You know, I'm all about taking a positive from the pandemic, and telehealth was, was definitely... I think it's, while we've got amazing medical advancements in technology and healthcare, it can be a very slow moving sector because we ultimately want to be saving lives. Um, but telehealth and people becoming more familiar with you know, dealing with their own data, with self-testing, all of this is ultimately, hopefully, working towards huge advancements, such as you're saying there, your own chat GPT. What about bringing in that kind of safeguarding piece? You know, we don't want people necessarily taking information and you know running with it and going off to get medication. Uh, what role do some of the, the humans get involved? So we, we couple both um, digitization, technology, AI predictive modeling with high-end quality care as well. So the humans will always have a place at the table what we're trying to do is recognise again with the demand and supply gap mm -hmm. widening that the facilities are there for the high end needs patients. Mm -hmm. So those critically sick who really need to be there um, and putting in place technology and solutions to again avoid people needing to go to the facility to begin with. Well, I love this idea because we know that people can sometimes get sicker in hospitals, ironically. You know, we want people to be, as we talked about earlier, at home in nature, you know, taking a walk, um, staying out of hospital and, and rightly so keeping those energy demands to, to a minimum. And I think, um, again, not to put in place another alarming statistic, but it's important to notice that for the first time in history, our children are going to have a worse off quality of life than we currently have because of the way we're living on our planet. So again, through AI predictive modeling, flipping from human genomics to our environmental genomics, mm -hmm. it's important to gather data on our current status of our natural systems and how these are changing over time. So looking at the complex interrelationship between human health and planet health. And Amy, with all of the knowledge that you have, both from the sustainability piece and of course, your role at M42 in healthcare, for people listening today to really, you know, prevent before we even pick up our phones, to live better, live healthier, live longer. Um, what are some of the things you would advise us trying, changing, adjusting, trusting even? I think it's the link between your human physical health and also your mental health. So keeping that optimistic mindset, mm -hmm. not being naive to things, but also noticing that we are we're open to change. We can change our views and we can change our approaches. We can change who we collaborate with, so who we focus our efforts on. So again, um, drawing back to the work M42 is doing with Ocean X, for example, we're doing leading research. Um, so that means at the moment we've got a mission that's just been completed in the Gulf where we're gathering massive amounts of data on natural systems. This one is specifically on fish diversity. So it's partnering with the right people to gather the information that will enable us to have a more informed understanding on the health of our planet. This is really important when we're looking at climate change. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing, for example, new diseases popping up in new geographic locations because of climate change. So new rainfalls coming out, which is mean, meaning malaria is turning up in new parts around the world. But by knowing that, we can proactively put in place systems and services to minimise impacts, mm -hmm. particularly those communities most at risk and vulnerable. So being responsive at this point rather than reactive when yeah, it's too late. That's exactly right. I have to say, you've buoyed me up speaking about, about positivity because... I find it very heartening to think about how much work goes on behind the scenes, to think about experts in all sorts of different fields, really doing so much for, yes, of course, the good of the planet and COP28 going on right now, but for the good of the population, whether that is, you know, keeping a child out of the hospital to whole communities being ready should something be around the corner. Amy Lotsky, thank you so much for joining us. For anyone who wants to do any further reading on the work that you're doing or indeed getting involved in some of the tech that's available right now, what's the best way of getting in touch? So please follow us on LinkedIn, M42 Health. Also follow us on Instagram and, of course, our website. Thank you so, so much. Enjoy the rest of COP. Really thank appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Helen. More on Ion Health coming your way. We are talking the role of tech in healthcare. It is Helen Farmer with you on Dubai I 103.8. Dubai Eye 103.8. Join the conversation.